Today we're debuting our new crazy lighting setup for this channel. No, I'm just kidding. Today we're going to look at these large RGB panels to help you determine which one is the best for you. In today's video, we'll be looking at each of these large RGB panels, looking at their key features and their use cases. We'll then be doing some quick comparisons before wrapping it up with some final thoughts. And remember to stick around to the end of the video for this week's exciting giveaway. Before we get started, why do you want a large RGB panel? Of course, an RGB panel allows you to light your scene with some creative lighting. Whether you want it lit red, green, blue, or anything in between, or have creative lighting effects such as fireworks, police lights, or a campfire effect, you can do this all with an RGB panel. In terms of why you would want a large RGB panel, in this scenario, bigger is better. Typically, the larger the panel, the higher the output slash the brighter it'll get. So you can light anything from a close-up all the way to a wide establishing shot using one panel, depending on how bright it gets. Of course, having the light spread over a more even surface area slash a larger surface area, so that's the area of the panel itself, allows for more flattering light when lighting a subject as either a close-up, mid, or a wide. Weight and size also come into play when you're thinking about your large RGB panels. Of course, bigger is brighter, but it also becomes a little bit more cumbersome. This isn't a concern for some people or some productions, but you need to factor that in when you're thinking about which panel to buy as we go through all of our options today. First of all, I just want to define two things that we'll be mentioning a lot today. The first one is TLCI. So TLCI is just a digital measurement of how accurate skin tones look when you're using a light's CCT mode. Typically, you want a TLCI of 90 plus. You don't need to worry about any of these lights because all of these lights achieve that very, very easily. The other thing that I want to talk about is DMX control. So DMX control is a way of remotely controlling your lights using a DMX controller board. The advantage of this over, say, a smartphone app, which a lot of these lights offer, is that you can control every single light controlled to your DMX board all in one place. Whereas with an app, you would need to use the light manufacturer's app. So for example, Aperture has the Cytus Link app and Pilot Cine has Cubasync. So if I was using the P300 remotely, but I wanted to also control the Pilot Cine remotely, I would have to switch between apps constantly. Those are the two things I just wanted to quickly define before we get into all of our lights today. But now that that's out of the way, we can talk about the lights. First of all, Pilot Cine RX50. The Pilot Cine RX50 is a relatively compact RGB panel from Pilot Cine. This light only measures 23 by 16.5 centimeters, making it a nice and small and convenient size for bringing this around in your kit wherever you go. The light has a CCC temperature range of 2500 to 8500 with green magenta adjust giving you a TLCI of 99. You also get full 360 RGB color, gel modes and color picker modes as well as creative lighting effects all within this light. This light can be controlled either via using this dial or via DMX via an adapter or even Pilot Cine's Cuba Sync app for your smartphone, which allows you to have access to all of this light's creative lighting functions as well as all of its other lighting functions. The Pilot Cine RX50 has a max output of 1880 lux at one meter and is nice and small and compact. Another benefit of this light is that it can also run off internal power or even a V-Lock. A huge benefit of having a light so small and compact is that you can throw this into your bag and have a fully featured RGB light on the go, always on you. As well as the fact that this can run off either internal or V-Lock power. 
Now, because it's such a lightweight light, you can mount it on a lower payload stand, such as this Fotix P220 that we have mounted on here today. Or you can even go for some more creative lighting options, such as using a super clamp and this friction arm in order to position this light in some weird overhead positions or in some hard to reach places. The Pilot City RX50 comes in three different kits, the standard, which is a light by itself, the deluxe, which is including of these barn doors and some diffusion, or the premium, which is the deluxe kit plus a V-Lock battery plate on the back to power this light. Now let's look at our razor lights. Here we have the MC100 and the MC400. These are both very similar lights at their core with a few key differences. Both of the panels in and of itself are nice and thin with a full metal construction of the body and these plastic bumpers on the side. Both of them feel very, very solid when you're handling them, so you can be assured that they are of a very good build quality. They also have these built-in barn doors, so you can control your spill without installing another accessory. And if you wanted a bit of a softer look, you can install some soft boxes that Razer also makes for these lights. Both of these lights have a CCT color temperature range of 2400K all the way up to 9900K with green magenta adjust giving you a TLCI of 98. You also have full 360 RGB color, gel modes and creative lighting effects all built into these lights. In controlling these lights you have a couple of options including the back panel, DMX which like the rest of our DMX controlled lights here today you can control all these lights remotely, daisy chained together using only one console or even smartphone control. Using the Artnet RTX Wi-Fi adapter, you can control these lights via your phone using the Luminaire app for iOS or the Artnet app for Android. In researching for this video, I found out that if you have the RTX One adapter on either of these lights and you have the Luminaire app on your iPhone, you can also use the Luminaire app on your Apple Watch. F so for all of you Apple users out there, you can control these lights using your watch. And that's just really, really cool. Now that we've finished with the similarities, let's start looking at the differences. As you can plainly see, the 400 is larger than the 100. The 400 is 63 by 44 centimeters, whereas the 100 is 50 by 34. The 400 is also actively cooled using fans at the back, which are quite quiet, so you don't really need to worry about that. Whereas the MC100 is passively cooled. The fans are important on the MC400 due to its higher output than the MC100. The 400 outputting 10,000 lux at one meter over the MC100's 2,200 lux at one meter. Spoiler alert, that 10,000 lux makes this MC400 the second brightest panel that we're looking at today. There's also the power difference. The MC100 can be powered via a singular V-Lock using the built-in V-Lock plate on the back of the light, whereas the MC400 will require two V-Locks to power or both of these lights can be powered via wall power using a power brick. You do need to be a bit wary though that the MC400's power brick is a lot heavier. The V-Log plates on the back of these lights are really, really convenient if you want to shoot off wall power, say you're out in the bush or something and you want still really solid and really bright RGB lights, I think that these are a really solid option. As for mounting these lights with the MC100, you can mount it on a lighter payload stand, such as this Manfrotto BAC1052, whereas the MC400 will need a slightly sturdier stand, such as the 1005 or the 1004 BAC from Manfrotto. And of course, you want to counterweight both of these lights using a either five kilogram or 10 kilogram shot bag. 
Now let's look at the Aperture Nova P300C. This is a really solid RGB panel from Aperture with a CCT range of 2000K all the way up to 10,000K with green magenta adjust, giving you a TLCI of 95. You also get full 360 RGB color, color picker modes, creative lighting effects, and gel modes. You can control this light either via the control box which right now we have mounted to the back of the light via a quick release adapter, or you can mount this to the stand of the light using the included super clamp and quick release adapter. You also have DMX control or even smartphone control using Aperture's Citus Link app. Now, this light is actively cooled as it will get quite hot with its maximum output of 9,000 lux at one meter, so this is a very bright light, but of course the act of cooling is essential in keeping this light in working temperature. You don't need to worry about the fan noise though, because in all of our uses of this light, which we've had for a while, we didn't find the fans distracting in any case. Now this is an admittedly chunky light, measuring in at 56 by 45 by 16 centimeters, but that's all in the interest of ensuring an all-in-one build and a solid build quality. Lugging it around is a little bit cumbersome at times, but there is a handle on the back of the light to make it easy to carry. You can either power this light via wall power or via an optional dual V-Lock power adapter in case you're away from society and don't have access to any power. If you need to shape this light in any way or soften this light, Aperture makes a bunch of accessories and modifiers such as soft boxes, parabolic soft boxes, grids, and even barn doors in case you wanted to control this light spill. In terms of mounting this light, something neat about the Nova P300C is that this is actually a combination receiver. So you can either mount it to a stand such as this Manfrotto BAC1005 using a standard spigot and using this butterfly lock, or you can even mount it to a yoke receiver or a baby pin receiver by removing this screw lock and just mounting this entire piece into the stand. Make sure that you counterweight whichever stand that you mount this on using a five kilogram shot bag. Now let's look at a light some of you guys may have never heard of, the Cream Source Vortex 8. So the eight in the name stands for these eight different lighting zones that are on the panel itself. Why that's important, we'll get into that in a bit. This is a really high-end light and with that comes some really high-end features. This light is IP65 dust and water resistant. So that means that you can have this light sitting out in the rain, shooting at any angle and you can be confident that this light will still work. Cream Source is an Australian brand which has been establishing a name for itself in the worldwide film industry. Cream Source's lights have already been used on sets such as The Mandalorian, Captain America Civil War, The New Thor, The New Batman, and the list goes on. So you can be assured that they have very, very quality products. The Cream Source Vortex 8 is a very tough and sturdy light that can tough any set or situation that you throw it into. It also features a 20 degree beam without diffusion, so this can be used as either a punchy spotlight or it can be used as a softer, more flattering light when you attach diffusion such as this. This light has a CCT range of 2200K all the way up to 15,000K with green magenta adjust, giving you a TLCI of 95. You also get full 360 RGB color and creative lighting modes, as well as the ability to control this light either via the back control panel with some easy and intuitive menu systems, as well as the option for DMX, radio, or Wi-Fi, or even a tether remote, which Cream Source also makes for this light. The Vortex 8 also features things such as high-speed sync mode and pixel mapping, so that's where those eight different lighting zones come into play. And if you want a further in-depth look into this and what they look like in action, 
check out the BTS video that we have on our channel linked here on a cream sauce music video shoot. The Vortex 8 has a crazy high output of 73,500 lux at one meter, which outperforms all of the rest of the lights that we've looked at today very, very easily. Being such a big light with so many features packed in, this is quite a heavy and large light. This light measures 69 by 38 by 12 centimeters and weighs 13 kilograms. So it's not for the faint of heart or the faintest of stands. You need to make sure that the stand that you mount it on has a baby pin receiver and is rated for at least 13 kilograms. We have it here mounted on a Matthews combo stand, which is a nice sturdy stand and make sure whenever you're mounting this light to a stand, you also counterweight the stand with one of our George's 10 kilogram shot bags. For even more rigging flexibility, this light has eight 3 8 inch rigging insert points all over the light, so you can really mount this light however and wherever you please. Cream Sauce also makes modifiers for this light, such as soft boxes, grids, and honeycombs, so you can really shape this light's quality to however you need. Now, we've looked at each of these lights in detail. Let's start looking at some quick demonstrations and comparisons so you can see which one is best for you. Now we're going to get into the first of our tests. This is a pretty simple one. We're going to be shooting a mid shot of me with each of these lights at 100% on the same height and at the same distance from me. We'll be putting each of these lights on their respective stands weighted for their weight class. So we'll describe this as well as we go through each light. And with our brighter lights, we're going to do something a little bit different as well, but we'll get into that once we get there. First off, looking at the RX50 at the distance of 1.4 meters at 100% brightness using the settings that are on the screen. This is with absolutely no ND and you can plainly see that it is more than enough to film my face on this mid shot. Ooh, before we listen to this idiot ramble on for a little bit longer, I want to point out something. You've probably noticed a little multicolored hue light going on in the background. That's the Aperture B7C Multicolor Smart Bulb. This is a really amazing product from Aperture that allows you to control creative lighting effects all in an LED bulb thanks to Aperture's Citus Link app with an internal battery. Now, this is actually this week's giveaway prize. So in order to win this little amazing piece of kit, I want you guys to shoot a short scene up to 60 seconds long using some creative lighting. It can be on anything that you want. All you need to do is implement some creative lighting. You need to do it at home or your place of residence. So you can be either indoors or outdoors as long as it's on your property. And you need to include a segment detailing how you shot and lit the film. Once you've shot your film and uploaded it to YouTube, I want you guys to send a link to this email. Just make sure that we can see it via that link. You guys have two weeks to shoot your scenes and I'm looking forward to seeing how creative you guys can be. If you need any more details about specific rules, follow us on Instagram and find the post detailing the giveaway. Moving on to the MC100 at the same distance and height at 100% brightness. Once again, same settings, no ND. This is considerably brighter than the RX50 and you can see that it's filling in my face more. Moving on to the Nova, we are getting a lot brighter. So let's put on some ND and we can cut off some of this excessive light. You'll notice that with these bigger panels, the bigger surface area allows for a much more flattering light on my face rather than a smaller surface area, which will create a more spotty effect. Now, as you probably would have noticed, the MC400 in the mid shot was a little bit too bright and we had to start putting some ND on. So with these next two lights, the MC400 and the Vortex 8, we're going to be putting at a little bit more of a distance and we'll be shooting them through some diffusion. 
So with both of the lights, we'll do it at this distance with and without diffusion so you can see the difference. And this should hopefully replicate a more real life scenario on how you would use these lights. We are a little bit further back and we still have some ND on. And as you can see at 100% brightness, with a little bit of ND, we get a nice soft clattering light. Now let's look at it with a five in one reflector over the top. So this diffuses the light a little, as you can see, it's cutting off a little bit of light. But if we take off the ND, then we are leveled out again. Now to the Vortex 8. This is at 100% brightness at three meters with no ND and no diffusion. As you can see, it's really, really bright. But now that we've put some ND on, it evens it out a little. The spotty nature of the Vortex 8 really shows off in this shot. So you can really see how harsh the shadows are because it's so spotty. But if we put some diffusion on the Vortex 8, then it softens out the light a lot more and it makes it a lot more flattering. Now let's check out the dome diffusion. So as you can see, you can get a nice flattering light. If we combine both diffusions and take off the ND, we get a nice even flattering light. And once again, we'll show it off with the five in one reflector in front of the light as well. This is our second demonstration. So we're gonna be filling against the sun. We've mounted all of our lights on the same Matthews combo stand. What's really, really nice about this is that it has a baby pin receiver and a mini spigot for the rest of the lights. So we'll be shooting all of these lights at 100%. So they're all at the same intensity and we can see how they compete against the sun. Let's get into it. With the RX50 and the MC100, unfortunately, we couldn't really see that much of a difference between the lights being on and off when filling against the sun. So we decided to move them a little bit closer and see if we saw a difference there. Now, in fairness, the sun is quite a foul beast to light against. So if there's any results at all, you know the light is good anyway. Moving on to the Nova, there is a little bit of difference between the light being on and off, filling my face against the sun. MC400, of course, being brighter than the Nova P300 at a thousand nits brighter at one meter. The Vortex 8 will, of course, outperform all these lights in this department. Now for our RGB comparison test. This is a pretty simple test. We just had all of the lights on party mode, eight meters away at the same setting. So that's 12,800 ISO at f2.8 at 100% brightness. As you can see, even our smaller lights, the MC100 and the RX50 were able to throw their RGB quite far in this scenario, but once we start getting to the bigger lights, such as the Nova and the MC400, we can really see how bright they can get, throwing their RGB effect. Of course, the Vortex 8 will outperform all of the lights in the lineup due to its narrow beam angle and its 73,500 lux at one meter. Now let's add some diffusion to the Vortex 8, see how that goes. And once again, yes, we even out the light a little bit more, but it's so bright that we're almost missing some information. As you can plainly see, all of these lights are really, really solid. The Pilot Cine RX50 is a really nice and compact option if you need something that can run remotely off power, either via VLOX or internal battery, and something that you can just throw into your bag and take anywhere with you. But if you want a little bit more oomph and you still want that capability of being able to shoot without wall power, the Razer MC series is a really solid option, especially the MC400 being our second brightest light that we've looked at today with those built-in V-locks and that convenient thin frame form factor. The Nova P300 will always be a really, really solid light all around with a bunch of great features packed in. 
but if you want the best of the best, then you need to go with the Cream Sauce Vortex 8. It's got everything that you need and even more, and it's Australian owned, just for a little bit of extra brownie points. There's no wonder that this light has been adopted by Hollywood and has been used on feature films. And once again, if you wanna see this light in action with all those cool features such as high frame rate mode and pixel mapping, check out our music video BTS on our channel linked here. Well, that's us for today. If you need any more information about the products mentioned in this video, they're all linked in the description down below. If you found this video entertaining or informative, let us know by hitting that like and dropping us a subscribe. Follow us on Instagram for the latest in gear updates, tech news and giveaways. Thanks heaps for watching and happy shooting.